Daily Words of God The work of God is something that you cannot comprehend. If you can neither fully grasp whether your choice is correct, nor can you know whether the work of God can succeed, then why not try your luck and see whether this ordinary man may be of great help to you and whether God has indeed done great work. However, I must tell you that in the time of Noah, men had been eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage to such an extent that it was unbearable for God to witness. So he sent down a great flood to destroy mankind, sparing only Noah's family of eight and all kinds of birds and beasts. In the last days, however, those spared by God are all those who have been loyal to Him until the end. Though both ages were times of great corruption, unbearable for God to witness, and mankind in both ages became so corrupt and denied that God was their Lord. God destroyed only the people in the time of Noah. Mankind in both ages caused God great distress. Yet God has remained patient with the men of the last days until now. Why is this? Have you never wondered why? If you truly do not know, then let me tell you. The reason that God is able to accord grace to people in the last days is not that they are less corrupt than people in the time of Noah, or that they have shown repentance to God. Much less is it that technology in the last days is so advanced that God cannot bring himself to destroy them. Rather, it is that God has work to do in a group of people in the last days, and that God will do this work himself in his incarnation. Furthermore, God will choose a part of this group to become the objects of his salvation and the fruit of his management plan and bring these people into the next age. Therefore, no matter what, this price paid by God has entirely been in preparation for the work His incarnated flesh will do in the last days. The fact that you have arrived at today is thanks to this flesh. It is because God lives in the flesh that you have the chance to survive. All this good fortune has been gained on account of this ordinary man. Not only this, but in the end, every nation shall worship this ordinary man, as well as give thanks to and obey this insignificant man, because it is the truth, the life, and the way he brought that has saved all mankind, eased the conflict between man and God, shortened the distance between them, and opened up a connection between the thoughts of God and man. It is also he who has obtained even greater glory for God. Is such an ordinary man unworthy of your trust and adoration? Is such an ordinary flesh unfit to be called Christ? Can such an ordinary man not become the expression of God among men? Does such a man, who has spared mankind from disaster, not deserve your love and your desire to hold on to him? If you reject the truths expressed from his mouth, and detest his existence among you, then what will become of you in the end? All of God's work in the last days 
is done through this ordinary man. He will bestow everything upon you. And what is more, he will be able to decide everything relating to you. Can such a man be as you believe him to be? A man so simple as to be unworthy of mention? Is his truth not enough to utterly convince you? Is witness of his deeds not enough to utterly convince you? Or is it that the path he brings is not worthy for you to walk on? When all is said and done, what is it that causes you to abhor him and to cast him away and give him a wide berth? It is this man who expresses the truth. It is this man who provides the truth. And it is this man who gives you a path to follow. Could it be that you are still unable to find the traces of God's work within these truths? Without the work of Jesus, mankind could not have come down from the cross. But without the incarnation of today, those who come down from the cross could never gain God's approval or enter into the new age. Without the coming of this ordinary man, you would never have the opportunity to see the true countenance of God, nor would you be qualified to, for you are all objects that should have long ago been destroyed. Because of the coming of the second incarnation of God, God has forgiven you and shown you mercy. Regardless, the words I must leave you with in the end are still these. This ordinary man, who is God incarnate, is of vital importance to you. This is the great thing that God has already done among men.